Nintendo are a very special company. We're sure that's absolutely not news to anyone, but when you look back on their various franchises, in most of their legendary licenses, there is not one singular high point that bests the other games in the series. Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario World, Super Mario 64. There is not one definitive best game. The same goes with Zelda and Metroid and Star Fox. There are so many other high quality titles in them that it's hard to distinguish which one is truly the best, and everyone has their own favorite. The same can be said for Nintendo's cult series, F-Zero, the SNES debut, was a graphical revolution, employing high-quality sprites and Mode 7, which allowed tracks to scale and rotate around your vehicle to create the illusion of steering. The releases in this series were few and far between, with only three home console releases between 1990 and 2003. The GameCube release, F-Zero GX, followed in the footsteps of the original by pushing the console's hardware to its limits, creating a visual experience that is still impressive today. But more on that in a later reflection. Let's get back to F-Zero X. In many ways, this was the black sheep of the series, lacking the graphical prowess to really sell the system, as well as the complexity and attention to detail found in GX. In other areas, however, F-Zero X can be seen as the best of the bunch, and it's evident as soon as you power up your console. As the menu screams into view, you're greeted by six ample chested women holding up various options and modes of play. The real meat of the game is found in the GP race, which is where you'll spend 99% of your F-Zero racing career. There's also options for time attack and practice modes, as well as a fiendishly addictive multiplayer mode. The GP race is split into cups. Initially, you have access to three, Jack, Queen, and King. Each contains six tracks to conquer at impossibly high speeds. In a move away from the SNES original, different vehicles have different performance grades to show how well they will perform in certain areas. Ships were graded in accordance to their body power, boost power, and grip. The tracks themselves are stars in their own right. Big Blue's giant cylinder, Firefield's high jump, the tracks were made even more fun by the fact that there were 30 ships on the course at a time, and you were even able to kill off the opposition. Well, this is a Nintendo game, so I guess you wouldn't be killing them. The music is by far the highlight of the game, and it's just badass to this day. Composed of speed metal and nothing but speed metal, the soundtrack in F-Zero X is borderline cheesy, but at the same time it gets the adrenaline flowing, and in just a word, it is awesome. The same can't be said for the game's announcer. Bellows of, you've got boost power, and whoa, you're way out in front. His bellows are super compressed to the point that you think Nintendo made him record his lines with his face submerged in a bowl of water. This was one of many areas Nintendo had to cut down to achieve the blistering speed seen in the game. But to be honest, if you go into the game looking for sheer graphical prowess, you're sort of missing the point. F-Zero X is about going really, really fast and having fun while you're doing so. An expansion pack for the game was released in Japan for the ill-fated 64DD system. The expansion featured new tracks as well as a ship and track editor for added customization. It's a shame such features couldn't have been made more accessible. These were probably too big an addition for the base game to include, although later F-Zero titles did feature similar modes. X could be seen as merely a nostalgic novelty were it not for its sheer amount of charm as well as just how fun the game is overall. This was one of the fastest games at the time. The combination of ridiculous speeds, satisfying handling, and shrewd track design helped create a racing experience unlike anything before it. For those of you who love exploring gaming's past, definitely check out this N64 gem. And for longtime series fans, why not strap on those rose-tinted racing goggles one more time? This is a racer for the record books.